In his autobiography slash style guide, Finishing the Hat, composer and lyricist Stephen Sondheim establishes seven ground rules for analyzing the work of writers. Ground rule number five is only speak ill of the dead. Quote, how can you comment critically on someone's work without hurting the writer whose work you're dissecting? My answer is cowardly, but simple. Criticize only the dead. I have never believed in de mortuis nil nisi bonum. Speaking ill exclusively of the dead seems to me the gentlemanly thing to do. Welcome to Respect the Dead, the podcast where we exclusively talk shit about dead people because you can't hear the haters when worms are eating your ears. (laughs) (laughs) Buddy, it's no surprise that everyone celebrated your demise and now Worms are eating your eyes, so don't you worry your rotting head, as you sleep in your sodden bed, it's time to respect the dead. I'm Kaylin Conrad, that was Hoot in the intro. I'm Hoots. And I'm mainly Mandy. This is Respect the Dead, where we just don't. Uh, For our very first episode, I wanted to go with both someone who not only deserves no respect in death, but showed even less respect to the dead than we're going to in this series. Just a heads up, this podcast should not be listened to by literal babies, but you may hear a literal baby in the background of Lucha's audio. I live next to a park, and there are swings and slides and things, so... In this specific episode, probably don't listen to it if you don't want to hear about any super blatant homophobia. I will be dropping some F slurs, some F bombs, so like literally not for babies. Yeah, no babies. Uh, Are we ready? Yeah, let's do it. I think so. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm I'm excited as you can be. (laughs) So I'm covering Fred Phelps, full name Fred Waldrum Phelps, who was always an ugly-hearted authoritarian little shit with a face perfect for the back of a dartboard. Uh, He was the son of a Methodist cop, an Eagle Scout, a member of a high school frat, which I didn't even know that was a fucking thing. Wait, a high school frat? A high school fraternity. He was that much of a fucking douche. No. Oh, God. <laughs> what high schools do fraternities? Um, it was in Mississippi. So if that helps. <laughs> oh, go, okay. Um, well, they don't okay. have college in Mississippi. That's why. <laughs> I can't tell if I can't tell if this was a joke. I believe you. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on for the rest of my life believing that and telling people that. <laughs> So he joined the Mississippi Junior State Guard, and he won a bunch of awards. I don't remember what they actually were, but I wrote it down as the best at licking dirt off boots. Mm. <laughs> that probably, that's probably correct. Mm. Future Kalen here editing. Um, the award was actually for the best drilled member. So Phelps, he was a bottom. Uh, by 17, he was a Southern Baptist minister who thought his widowed daddy was a dirty heathen for remarrying a divorcee. Like he was like very upset about divorcees, which is like mm. such an like archaic Christian holdover that I find so funny because like literally every person is a divorcee. Yes. Yeah. That's like big Tudor vibes. <laughs> <laughs> It's very, very Thomas More. <laughs> so he caught off his entire family because they were all heathens who accepted this divorcee. Oh my God. <laughs> they apparently tried to like get back in contact with him, but he sent back every letter, birthday card they sent, even sent back unopened Christmas gifts that they sent for his kids. Oh, wow. His poor kids. Of which he had 13. 13? Ooh. Yeah, Jesus, that poor yeah, woman's sick. pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we will get to Margie Mary Sims. Oh um, my God, <laughs> Margie Mary <And> her... Sims. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly the name. I, I, literally... I didn't know her name, and now that I know it, I'm like, that's exactly the right name for her. Ooh, I, Margie, it's, Mar- it's honestly perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I want to hear about Margie Mary Sims shredded curtains. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Okay, so he dropped out of college to move. Oh, no. See, there is college. Um, He dropped out of college to to move to California and become a street preacher. Oh, nice. Uh, I'm not sure if there's like no church would have him, but that's how he decided he felt most comfortable 
spreading the mm. word of God, which is like screaming yeah. at people from the that, side of the road, which is like mm-hmm. pretty much how I, he spent the rest of his life. I could see him doing that. Do y'all have those where you are? We had this one specifically in downtown Toronto who would just like park himself at our cheap imitation of Times Square called Dundas Square. Mm -hmm. And he would just yell about homosexuals like ruining Mm. the world. And Mm. people would like stop and like film him and yell at him and try and debate him. And he would just (laughs) scream like obscenities back at them. Oh, (laughs) yeah. There's a there was a guy who used to like every week. I think it was either Wednesday or Thursday afternoon. He would be out there on like the main street corner there just screaming about God. I I never really listened to any of it. But what was kind of funny is that there was another guy who every time he would be there, he would be sitting next to him in his wheelchair with signs that were kind of just like, you know, God licks ass or things like that. Like, it was just... (laughs) Okay, God sounds cool. Yeah. Yeah. It became this, like, kind of interesting friendship between the two of them, too. Like, they kind of respected each other in a weird kind of way. It was was really Um, weird. I would watch this buddy cop movie 100%. I know, right? Me too. (laughs) Um, I haven't seen him in a while, so I think either he had some health issues or maybe he finally yep, he, maybe he died. Maybe. Dead. Yeah. So we can do an episode about him. Yeah. Maybe he'll be on this podcast <laughs> in the future. <laughs> okay. But this episode is about a different homophobic street preacher. Yes. Tell us more. Okay. So the media really likes to find the like salacious stories about homophobic Christians. Um, which is like, fine, whatever they're trying, they're, they, they get the word out about it, but time magazine did an entire story on him. Future Kalen here again. Um, so the article was called religion, repentance in Pasadena. And in it, they called Phelps a craggy faced engineering student. I thought that was cute because in 1951, he was harassing people at college in Pasadena about sins committed on campus by students and teachers, including promiscuous petting, which I love, (laughs) evil language, profanity, cheating, teachers' filthy jokes in classrooms, and pandering to the lust of the flesh i love this i love to pander to the lusts of the flesh i would like to know like what's the difference between evil language and profanity like yeah i think evil language would be something that speaks ill of god or okay. christianity and then profanity would just be your usual your fucks your bussies and so mm-hmm. maybe they didn't have that right. in 1951 but, <laughs> like, the bees bussies <laughs> um so that's where he met his wife Margie Mary Sims at the Arizona Bible Institute. Mm. They then moved to Topeka, Kansas and started Westboro Baptist Church, where they had 13 fucking children. (gasps) Very quickly. (sighs) That's so many children. How? Yeah, it's, there's a big cult vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Because like they moved on a compound and I'm like, anytime there's a compound in 13 children, like yeah. you have veered so rapidly into the cult territory. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. And I was like a fake cult expert. Uh, that's very red flaggy. Especially with the whole like, oh, they started their own church too. That that always yeah. kind of, it's yeah. like, oh, you had to start your own church. Why? <laughs> that that always concerns. That's always a cult thing. Because the, the church he originally went to when they moved there, um, I guess was a little too progressive for him. Like maybe they mm. didn't stone divorcees in, in the town square. <laughs> Probably. So his vitriolic preaching alienated church leaders and most of his congregation, leaving him with a small, like really small following that was mostly his family and his close friends. And homeboy was such a horrible fucking preacher that he had to like live, love, and learn how to get a fucking job selling vacuum cleaners oh. and baby strollers as a day job. No. Um, and some of his 13 children were sent off to work uh, selling candy door to door for several hours each day under the guise of it being for like the church. Mm. Uh, I've been at their church. Yeah, through one of those like kids, you know, at school you would have like chocolate almond sales yep. or whatever the fuck. Right. Yeah. They did that, but then refused to pay for the chocolate after because they like loan it to you so that mm-hmm. you can sell it and then give them their money back. And they were just like, but they no, just fuck kept you. the money for yeah, the church. So, so they got sued. I mean, <laughs> I support like, that. I, I think that no, that's me too. pretty based. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't them, I'd be proud of it. <laughs> 
yeah weird predatory chocolate companies <laughs> yeah that use child labor I, i'm coming down <laughs> on fred phelps side here i gotta say <laughs> don't you dare clip that <laughs> I, okay <laughs> this is a, Keep th- yeah. <laughs> no that's fair he was he was basically fighting nestle at this point <laughs> so he went and got a law degree and okay so i saw that he had taken on civil rights cases for black students who were discriminated against by school systems. Oh. Yes, and black adults who were discriminated against by the police. Oh. So I was started looking into this, and I'm like, hmm. but I want to hate you. Like, <laughs> I want to hate you fully <laughs> and that? completely, right? Like, I don't, I don't want to, like, have any, like, positive thoughts about you whatsoever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, but this is going to make it a tragic fall from grace, right? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> so I found some statements by one of his sons, Nate, who said that he only took civil rights cases for the cash, mm-hmm. took as much money from the clients as possible, and that his father was a virulent racist and always used slurs when referring to his black clients, saying that they would come into his, this is a direct quote, They would come into his office, and after they left, he would talk about how stupid they were and call them dumb. And then I'm not allowed to say this last word. I am not black. Oh, no. Yikes. How? (laughs) I don't even know how to describe how like how ugly of a person you need to be to take on like civil rights cases and then wait till they leave and be like those dumb slurs like <laughs> yeah literally like the most hateful person on earth well he was <laughs> he's dead later on when a court reporter failed to have a transcript ready for him when he needed it he sued her for twenty two thousand dollars and during the trial declared her a hostile witness and then cross-examined her for nearly a week during which he accused her of being a slut <laughs> tried to introduce testimony from former boyfriends <gasps> whom phelps wanted to subpoena and accused her of a variety of perverse sexual acts. Wait. And then this part's less funny. But she started crying on the stand because he was so fucking horrible. What? What, what, what does that, that have does to any do? of that have to do? <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor, this woman is a slut. Like she is, fo- she is too busy sucking dick to get her goddamn job done. <laughs> is I'm guessing the angle he was going for. I guess. But like, as as a dick sucker, I must say like, it's I not got that lots hard. Of jobs done. <laughs> At the same time as sucking dick. The Lord gave us multiple hands yeah. and mouths and holes. Like I haven't I I haven't sucked a dick while editing a video, but I feel like I could. No, oh, I could. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Mandy. <laughs> oh I could. I where there's a will, there's a way. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so he had charges brought up against him for uh, professional misconduct. Can't imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> because everyone in the courtroom was like, what the literal fuck? <laughs> um, he appealed and then brought in a bunch of made up statements to confirm she was indeed a slut, as if that's. <laughs> As if that's what was on trial. Wait, wait, wait. So he was accused of being unprofessional. And that is, he just doubled down on it. He's yeah, like, no, he no, no. Like... She's really a slut. Your Honor, in my defense, she's a hoe. <laughs> um, so he was disbarred. Which is... <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Barred for saying a bitch sucked too much dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so wonderful to think about how fucking annoying mm-hmm. he must have been. I'm like, I'm just picturing the people in the courtroom like rolling their fucking eyes and like staring at each other, like, can you fucking say this? Oh, I'm crying. Oh, that's so good. It's so good. <laughs> I, I love it. it it's, it's fucking hard. Like, I just, I want to read these, um, like, the transcripts from the court. I want to read them so bad. Oh, my God. I really, I really wish, I really wish I had managed to pull up a tr- uh, court transcript. Future Kalen, see if you can find it while you're editing and add some in if you can find it. I got it past Kalen. So I wasn't able to find the actual court transcripts. 
but from the ruling that was handed down during his disbarment, they said that when studying the transcripts, they found that his examination was replete with repetition, badgering, innuendo, belligerence, irrelevant, and immaterial matter, evidencing only a desire to hurt and destroy the defendant. Later, when she started crying, he complained that she was trying to influence the jury with her tears. What a dick. Okay, bye. Um, Okay, so it's not funny anymore for a second, but uh, a lot of his children said that he would routinely physically abuse them with weapons. Very Mm culty. Very in line with the- Not surprising either. Do you know- this might be jumping ahead, and if it is, we, we can skip it. But do you know how many of his children uh, no longer are associated with the church out of the 13? Future Kaling, come <laughs> and give that information. So I couldn't find an exact number, but at least three of his children and one of his grandchildren have left the church. While I was looking, I went down this rabbit hole, and I found a post written by Zach Phelps. Uh, and there was a comment that said, when I was at Westboro, I prayed for people to die. President Barack Obama, Lady Gaga... Albert Snyder, George W. Bush, and many, many other people. And somebody responded like, oh, come on, Lady Gaga, what'd she ever do? And then there was a link to a YouTube video, one that we're going to talk about later. There's a few of his children who have been part of a documentary Mm -hmm. series. One of them was the most hated family on earth. And then one of them was like surviving the most hated family on earth or whatever. Um, But they're getting, they're making some money off of this. Mm Mm-hmm. They're they're selling their story and they're doing like a lot of like memoir stuff. So that's something at least. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, good for them. Okay. So this is we're getting to this part where this is the stuff he was really known for. Um, so the church would go to funerals mm-hmm. to protest. Mm-hmm. They would go to military funerals because America mm-hmm. is filled with filthy mm-hmm. heathenous perverts. I mean, that's true. And like, <laughs> I don't know. He's very he's. He was, yeah, he was very, like, anti-American military, and I'm like, okay, so that's okay. (laughs) We stand an anti-imperialist king. (laughs) Like, yes, but then they would, like, show up at those military funerals and be, like, with signs, like, your dead son was a fag. So, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) like, maybe the, the, like, mode of protest wasn't Mm -hmm. exactly um, super chill, (laughs) But they had also, maybe they, I think they were just reusing their signs that they would bring to like the funerals of gay people who had been murdered or people who mm-hmm. had died mm-hmm. from AIDS. Like, same, your son is a fag yeah. signs, well, your son is in hell, fags are a disease, and AIDS is the cure. Yeah, they're just like very they're on chill. a budget, <laughs> so they can't make, you know, multiple signs. They just yeah. have to use multi, one sign that's multi purposeful. Yeah, I get it. I understand yeah. that. Cool. So, Him and his church protesting was so prevalent and so horrid that the Supreme Court had to get involved, but that was ruled that Mm -hmm. that's technically free speech. So a bunch of states Mm. then went and just made laws stating that you can't protest within a certain distance from a funeral, like uh, an hour before or an hour after funeral services or like distances yeah. from cemeteries. Protesting at a funeral in general, I think mm-hmm. is pretty gross, even for like legitimately bad people. Like, I don't know, just let people grieve. I mean, and that's coming yeah. from us. That, and I mean, talk shit about the dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. This entire series could be called Protesting at a Funeral. But like... <laughs> At yeah. least we're not showing <laughs> up and playing the episode on a boombox to their loved ones if they had any. Right. No. Like I. I. I mean, we're doing it here in a, like a, a a little hangout yeah. in our you know our respective rooms, and if they want to w- listen to it, they can click on it and come join in. I guess. Yeah. But it's a lot <laughs> different than going to them and forcing them to listen to us. Be like, hey, hey your loved one's dead, <laughs> and you're we're glad. Like if that's a we're different. glad. Yeah, I, I wouldn't laugh in the face of a widow <laughs> necessarily <laughs> depends on the widow i guess but margie. margie so phelps targeted a wide range of people clearly but he liked to go after like people's faves he is so lucky he wasn't around during mm. stan culture like he went after reagan mm-hmm. princess die mm-hmm. george carlin heath ledger what? I know, right? How dare Aww. Fred Rogers, and then Catholics, Australians, Swedes, and the Irish. <laughs> I don't, Everyone's I don't know faves. If, Catholics. I don't know if they're anybody's fave. 
<laughs> oh, he fucking hated Catholics. Not as much as he hated gays, but there's a lot of Catholic hate in mm-hmm. like other Christian communities, like especially the really devout ones, like those fucking Catholics. They're screwing <laughs> this all up. Um, he also accused yeah. the Columbine shooters of being gay. That was a big talking point during that time. Mm-hmm. That was a huge talking point during that time. They they were like, uh, there were rumors that they were gay lovers. Yeah. Like, no, they were just white supremacists. <laughs> Hoots, didn't didn't you make a video about that, Hoots? So- I did. I did. Oh, what, what was your channel again? Um, It's called Little Hoot, like the children's book. Really, really fucked with my SEO and there. And we'd find that on YouTube. <laughs> and you can find it on YouTube.com <laughs> slash uh, <laughs> Channel slash little... I I don't know. Google it. I'll add it in. We'll have it in the show notes. His exact phrasing was, two filthy fags (laughs) slaughtered 13 people at Columbine (laughs) High. I shouldn't laugh in the middle of that. <laughs> like, why does everything like, sound so like catty though? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it, calling them filthy <laughs> is like so unnecessary. Like, we know what you think about gay people. Like, adding in the filthy mm-hmm. feels a little redundant. I don't know why I'm so surprised right. at like how mean he is. It's like, we get it, baby. <laughs> It's still shockingly funny. Not in like a, I'm shocked that they're saying it, but I'm like, I'm just shocked that I get to read this out. That like somebody, somebody yeah. went out and did this and now I'm talking about it. Um, okay. One of my favorite things that he did was like a, a bit of local activism, helping protect children in a local park by putting up signs warning that men were fucking in the bushes. <laughs> Attention, all local children. You there know, are men fucking in these bushes. These bushes, the big like size pointing. At them. Okay, it's like I'm picturing an Aaron Brockovich kind of story, where like so he he went to the local to like the local like town council or whatever, and they're like we can't. It's that's already illegal. Like we can't put up signs about this. Like we can't do any extra anything. Like this is just what's happening so he decided to take it mm-hmm. into his own hands and because do he's a an little activist. bit <laughs> i mean i guess he kind of <laughs> is an activist i mean yeah not in like a that, good that way kind of fit, doesn't it? <laughs> but like <laughs> um so i loved that and I... I really i couldn't find a copy of the signs but i really want one <laughs> <laughs> me too i want to see them because in my mind they're very like wily coyote mm. like, yeah, that's, no, what, I'm that's what i'm seeing in my head like these big arrows <laughs> just pointing at bushes <laughs> like, like specific bushes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like not every bush <laughs> just like a bush here and there you know it just has a big one this is the fucking bush <laughs> this the th- fucking bush. this is just a bush for peeing this one's fine <laughs> <laughs> I, okay but like i kind of feel like it's almost helpful like at that point in time like a lot of people did have to like go to parks to cottage or whatever but like and now it's like it's labeled mm. you don't have to worry that like you're like like Hoot said you're not going to show up uh at a bush thinking some guy's jerking off and you can join in to find out he's only peeing you'll be like oh no yeah. that's the peeing right. bush <laughs> my friend fred told me yeah that. that's yeah um, that's really <laughs> helpful it's like oh oh is this the bush I'm supposed to be at? Oh, I, I don't know. No, 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 that's three bushes down. Oh, okay. Three yeah. bushes down. It's like, oh, no, I see a, a bush over there with a sign above it with a man in flame. So I'm going to assume that's for me. <laughs> so in 1997, he wrote a letter to Saddam Hussein <laughs> praising his regime for being the only Muslim state that allows the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to be freely and openly preached on the streets. Didn't look into that, the veracity of that claim, Um, but... (laughs) Do you... You didn't fact check that? Should we go to PolitiFact? I want to know how he started off the the letter. Was it very formal, like, dear Mr. Hussein, or was it more... (laughs) Dear Mr. Hussein. Was it more informal? Like, hi of Saddam. <laughs> like, I really want Dear to know. Mr. Hussein, I am your biggest <laughs> fan. <laughs> Freddie Phelps. Oh. <laughs> and he finds, he's got like a little picture that he's drawn at the bottom. <laughs> of the two of them together. Like two stick figures. <laughs> this is me. And this is Saddam. Yeah. <laughs> They're holding hands. <laughs> 
I was like, and there's my mom and my dad <laughs> next to us. They're filthy divorcees. I drew, I drew them beheaded yeah, together. Yay. And they're both smiling. Um, and then uh, shortly thereafter, he was convicted of several crimes, including assault and battery. Uh, but every single time he was spared prison, no matter what he did, he got out of it. There was like, I think, I'm just going to make something up here, but I read like seven different charges, but they could have, there could have been like multiples or they could have been like rolled into the same thing. But mm, every yeah. single time he was either like, Oh, you were in jail for a night. So time served. Or there was like one time where it was ruled that he didn't get a speedy trial. So he didn't have to serve any time. Like the case was dismissed. And I'm like, I guess that's good. Like generally as a rule that they can't like, make you sit there and mm -hmm. wait for your trial for years on end and like ruin your fucking life but it would have been cute if it happened to him <laughs> this is <laughs> this was i think my favorite part in 1993 he went on the ricky lake show oh no where she graciously led him her platform to say that gays and anyone who carries the aids virus deserve to die but <laughs> He went home with his son and they got super aggro uh, and they were forced off set during a commercial break. And after he fucking died, Ricky Lake tweeted that when he had been on the show, he had told her that she worshipped her own rectum. So, <laughs> so she had him removed. And I literally don't know what it means. And I was really hoping somebody could tell me. I mean, I think that's just like eating a lot like, of fiber. Worshipping your own rectum. I'm like, is he saying that she's like... Worshipping your own rectum. That she invited him on to say that gays and people with AIDS deserve to go to hell. But then he said something like off, Why would off she color and like fucked up to her. And she was like, oh, this is too far. Yeah, that that's an interesting um, line to have of like, well, it's okay if he talks, you know, about gay people in this way, but the second he talks about my rectum, I draw the line there. I wonder <laughs> like, if she had to like have a rule after. Yeah. Like, if anybody brings up my <laughs> rectum, you need to get them the fuck off if, the set. Yeah. <laughs> the lady doth protest too much, I think. Um, no, sorry. I can accept homophobia, but I draw the line at my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, um, draw the line at my asshole is a good episode title. I don't know when. much about about Ricky Lake. Is, is she's a straight woman, right? Or is she queer? Uh, she. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just dying. The thought Maybe of Ricky Lake calling thing. herself queer. <laughs> like, I, she's I, I such just, a no, radical. I, I know that she wouldn't. No, oh she, God, she definitely no. was straight I, or else Ellen wouldn't have, like, mattered. There would have already been, like, a, a, a gay talk show host icon. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Uh, I really, like, I remember my mom watching her forever ago. She um, was, like, Lady Springer. But... Mm. Yeah, yeah, she was. Like it was, um, it was very like I trashy. Think, I think it was her show too that she had at one point guests on that were gay and they were talking about it's not a choice, which it's not. And then my mom was the one who was watching the tr the commercial with me, and she said, "I actually don't believe that." And that was the only conversation we had about gay people for a very long time. I mean, I chose to be gay, but you chose correctly. Um, <laughs> I chose to be a mess. <laughs> I guess I didn't choose so much as it chose me, but I'm very into it. The, the gay life chose you. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm very, I'm very much about it. Mm -hmm. If I, if I could have chosen it, I would have. It suits you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Uh <laughs> I feel like there's like a lot of overlap there between like the gay life and the gangster life. Like they always choose you. <laughs> um, okay. So. On March 15th, 2014, Nathan Phelps, Phelps is his strange son, reported that Phelps was in very poor health and was receiving hospice care. And the internet cheered. Aww. <laughs> and the internet was like, oh, no. <laughs> and then high-fiving everybody. <laughs> so there's, there's some controversy around this, but he said Phelps had been excommunicated from the church in 2013 and moved into a house where he basically stopped eating and drinking. And there's some claims from neighbors who have said that he like changed his mind at the end of his life. 
and like apologize to the like liberals next door or whatever but there's no there's there's been no like secondary confirmation from that it's just mm-hmm. like i don't know probably people wanting to fuck with his legacy because they think it's hilarious that like he can't defend himself now because he's mm-hmm. fucking dead <laughs> <laughs> and even if it is true i'll throw this out there Who like cares? it doesn't really impress me that much honestly like oh like five minutes before you died you tried to repent uh right good for you i guess like better than not but i just i i don't know i don't get that impressed by that honestly <laughs> no i don't care i'm i still would have pushed him in front of a train like no second thought about it like i'm standing behind you on a on a dark platform at night and you were going down baby yeah yeah it's it's like when people get really like oh well hp lovecraft like repented like right before he died it's like yes how many of his stories did he write before during that time though <laughs> most of them were not during that time uh oh that should be an episode is lovecraft we could talk about lovecraft because he was also awful <laughs> and he's dead, very dead i don't now. know anything about him so i will not do that episode but i will let somebody who does do it he did really suck he sucked, he sucked a, a lot. lot. All I know is his cat's name. What, what was the cat's name? Oh, I can't say that word. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I think you're. I think it was okay. him. Yeah, yeah. you're right. <laughs> it took me a second. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, yeah, I'm I think like, no, I no, no, no. Don't ask uh, me that question. Nope. <laughs> nope. Sorry. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> so there, there was a house across from his, uh, or from across from the Westboro Baptist Church that they painted in full rainbow colors, just to piss him off because he had so many like hateful signs and stuff um yes. and that still stands long after he died which was on march 19th 2014 at the age of 84 and this is my favorite part you're like okay did anybody protest at his funeral because i <laughs> If I had known <laughs> and I had had access, I would have went to his funeral. Oh, I, I I would have been tempted. But no, they made sure to have him cremated so that nobody could go piss on his grave. And they also did not hold a funeral. His daughter Shirley stated that that was because the church does not worship the dead. I feel like neither do we. We don't worship the dead. We certainly don't. Apparently he was immediately cremated and his cremated remains were buried in an unmarked grave in Kansas because they were too scared that someone would come and like dig up his stupid bones or whatever. So if we go to Kansas, we must pee over every inch of it just to be sure. I mean, every grave. Mm Mm-hmm. We're going to have to drink yeah. a lot of water. I mean, we'll be very yeah. hydrated. <laughs> uh, will we? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not afterwards. but <laughs> So that's Fred Phelps' horrible life from beginning to end. Well, it was it was quite horrible. <laughs> it was quite horrible. Wow. Now, there was something that, like, that I was saying to Mandy um, earlier. Like, I like I said, I, I used to, like, I feel, feel like I used to know a lot about the Phelps family, but uh, have forgotten. And one of the things I think I had heard is that like a lot of it is a grift and they're like trying to like get money from lawsuits from being like hit by people or like being um, like first amendment violations. Is, is any of that true or is that something that you came across? Um, okay. So I came across a lot of stuff, not from them and not from any of the ex communicated kids or any of the kids that left it's all from like outside sources but there was a lot of people that said that everything they did was for the publicity one because it just brought attention to the church Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. two because it brought in donations Mm -hmm. and it also brought in like all the angry activists on the other side who then are like so incensed by how like aggro they are showing up at somebody's funeral and like protesting them is a good way to get punched in the face Mm -hmm. like saying any of the things that they said is a good way to get punched in the face it's a good way to get silenced and then be able to sue because First Amendment or whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did see a lot of people saying that was the whole thing, but not that they didn't believe in this stuff. Okay. Phelps was like very intense with his religious beliefs, especially. Be- okay. So there's a, I can't remember the name of them, but there it's a sect of Christianity that does believe Jesus died for our sins, but only like a select predetermined group of people and everyone else is just going to burn in fucking hell when the rapture happens and those select people are taken 
Like, that's it. Mm-hmm. Like, nobody else is ever getting into heaven. Like, there's nothing that the, that you can do. Like, you're predetermined from birth to burn in hell, no matter how you live mm-hmm. your life. But special people like him and the people that agree to join his church are, like, the chosen ones. So it does seem like there is some pretty sincerely held, like, culty beliefs. But it, it doesn't seem like the way they went about things was very genuine like they they were clickbaity right like they wanted yeah they wanted pictures of themselves with signs that say like fags burn in hell or whatever yeah right? yeah I remember um I think some of my first exposure to them were videos of them having like bricks and stuff thrown at their van like I remember there was a video of them inside of their van that was going around YouTube or whatever at one point and um, they were having, yeah, people throwing bricks at them and like shattering the glass and, and stuff. Like it, it didn't seem like anyone got hurt in that one, but that was like my first like, oh, who the fuck are these people? Why are they getting bricks thrown at them? And then I fell into a deep dive and was like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, no, deserved. <laughs> you're like, oh, it's yeah. the only people who deserve to have like bricks thrown at them. They definitely deserve those bricks. If I had been there, I would have thrown one too. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so that was his entire worthless life. Um, I was going to get into stuff about his children and the excommunications, but I think it's like, it's a little too in-depth and all of his children have like media Mm -hmm. that they've put out themselves. Like his daughter, Megan, did the TED talk about leaving the church and growing up in the church. Mm -hmm. And I, for, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if she just also has curly hair because I have facial blindness, but I believe she is the one on the left in the um, (gasps) Lady Gaga. Really? uh, That (laughs) put out by the Westboro Baptist Church, uh, a video they filmed in a public high school with, I think, some of the best Oh my God, they're so good. (laughs) I have ever. There's so much concern in their eyes. (laughs) Concern, confusion, so much of that like. Yeah. What the fuck did she just say? Did she just say <laughs> yeah. 9-11 out of nowhere? <laughs> this is my favorite part. We have to cut in like a little yes. segment of that. So the video takes place at Central Michigan University. It's titled The Westboro Baptist Church Lady Gaga Parody, and it has almost 400,000 views. It was posted 12 years ago. You can check out our Instagram to see a clip from this, but on the screen is two young girls and their raggedy old mom. And yes, the girl on the left is Megan Phelps Roper, the woman who left the church and is now speaking out against it. Here's a little taste. Oh, you can stop God. You'll see what he does. 9-11. You ain't God. You ain't God. No, you ain't God. No, poker face. You show your film to everybody. You just God. You just God. Yeah, you just God. Your foreign face. You show your film to everybody. Yes, it's a bop, but no, I will not make you listen to the whole thing. But if you want to listen to it, uh, there'll be a link in the show notes. Do you know the context behind that? Like, how did they get invited? To- um, I guess America. <laughs> That's, uh, <laughs> I mean, would be my answer. I don't know if it was like it a might Catholic have been. high school, but I want that printed on a shirt. <laughs> like, I guess America. <laughs> America. <laughs> Like, I'm not sure. Um, I think your country is fucking horrible and your education system is garbage. Yeah, but yeah. There, I'm pretty sure there are like universities and, and there's plenty of like, like colleges and high schools that are religious in some manner, whether they're Catholic or whatever. Um, I know they don't like Catholics, so it's <laughs> yeah. probably not a Catholic one. But yeah, like it's that's definitely a thing in America for sure. And then they can be like, oh, it's religious freedom. So we can invite bigots to sing awkwardly at our students oh God, i love it so much there, there's got to be people who would approve of like a church coming in to do like a musical number without knowing who they are like they've got to be able to swindle people being like oh we're mm. a, a local church choir and we'd love to come in and sing some lady gaga songs from your class and then they get in and they're calling people filthy and muttering god hates you, god hates you. calling people whores uh so iconic <laughs> i mean yeah i was listening to that with my roommate and we were fucking <laughs> vibing you were really into that song too god Hoots. hates you is like one of my favorite insults <laughs> <laughs> 
it's like there's no coming back from that. Oh God, I love that song so much. My favorite part is when they just go 911. Yeah, just drop it, and they're so proud of themselves too. They're like they really. They're so like. <laughs> bet you didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> like, okay. Honey. I mean, no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't either. I guess. <laughs> like to be fair, I did not. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Respect the Dead. You can follow Respect the Dead on Instagram and Twitter at underscore Respect the Dead. If you want to follow us individually, you can find our socials in the show notes. And you should check out our YouTube channels. We don't shit on dead people there as often, but still, we're making tons of cool stuff. If you enjoyed Respect the Dead and would like to support us, there's a couple of ways to do that. You can give us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you found us. Give us at least five stars and then share us with a good friend who likes venting about dead people. You can also give us some money over on our Patreon. Patreon supporters get some cool bonus content like bloopers from the cutting room floor and even coming up with a fake sponsor ad that we'll read in an episode. It has to be a fake business, though, not your MLM, honey. Thanks so much for listening. Join us every Monday for our next Worm Feast. I'm Kellen Conrad. I'm Aileen Mandy. And I'm Hoots. Bye. 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 Bye.